In the last segment, I talked about the political strategy of terrorists, and I talked in generalities about the various steps that that strategy uh, takes in order to achieve a political end, or, or if you want to go back to my definition, the desired future, again from the terrorist perspective, not from anyone else's. So in this segment, what I like to do is to uh, elaborate a little bit more on that and begin with uh, talking about the impact of terrorism on the client state. That is not the target state, this, but the states that are associated with the target. And remember, the target always is the imperial hegemon uh, from the perspective of the terrorists. And every time I use client or I use imperial states, remember I'm talking from the perspective of the terrorist or, uh, group. <clears throat> uh, so keep that in mind. And then after uh, briefly talking about the impact of uh, uh, terrorism on the client state, my next uh, focus will be on using a specific case of the 9-11 attack and following through to see how successful that strategy was given my overall uh, discussion of terrorist strategy. So uh, let me begin by asking you the question, and that is, what do the terrorists expect to be the impact of the Terror Act against the hegemon's uh, 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 client state, in other words, in the political environment of the hegemon's client state? How do they expect the terrorism affect the masses of the client state. So for example, uh, in this case, the client state would be a state like Saudi Arabia, like United Arab Emirates. So how did the 9-11 attack, in other words, impacted Saudi Arabia? Uh, from the terrorist perspective, this is what should have happened. Uh, what should have happened was that it should have helped create polarization in that client state, in that area. In other words, some of the Saudis would say, yeah, this was good. Somebody could take on our tormentor, the United States. Other would not. And they would want to still align themselves with the United States. The same happening in other, let's say in Jordan or in Iraq and others. So in other words, one of the aims of the terrorists is to polarize the masses in the client state. If they are already polarized, certainly uh, the terror attack is supposed to intensify uh, that polarization. And also, once the society is polarized, uh, then according to the terrorist strategy, the situation becomes ripe for instantiating revolutionary changes in the client state. When there is intense polarization, it, the situation is ready for the people to take on the regime, overthrow the regime, and start uh, something akin to a revolution. So therefore, uh, the idea is by polarizing the environment of the client states of the target of terrorism, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, etc., etc., you are uh, helping to bring about regime change through polarization of politics. So keep that in mind. And with that said, what I want to do is next to go ahead and apply the theory to the case of 9 11 attack uh, on the United States and then ultimately decide how well uh, did it succeed. So we have the Al-Qaeda attack, uh, attacking the uh, United States, known as the 9-11. And based on the theory, we certainly had American outrage. And also, the idea was that with this audacious terrorist attack, uh, the regimes such as Saudi Arabia and other uh, dependent states uh, in the Muslim world were also, uh, were also undermined. And remember, this is supposed to 
make the United States appear vulnerable uh, and weaker than assumed under colonial stereotype among the masses of the client state. Now, before I get any far further, let me say a few words about the terrorist strategy. And the first thing is that it is a risky strategy. If the act of terror is too horrifying and too gruesome, if a lot of civilians, women and children are killed, then in all likelihood, it will not produce the intended impact on the masses of the client states. In other words, the Muslim masses and the Arab world may not get the intended impact. In fact, if anything, if it's too gruesome, uh, these masses may very much identify with the target and feel sympathy for it. One of the things that is rather indisputable about 9-11 attack was that it was, without question, uh, one of the most horrifying experience beyond belief. With nearly 3,000 civilian deaths, the world was profoundly shaken, and many people in the world felt much sympathy toward the United States. So most of the world, including the Muslim world and the Middle East, uh, pretty much accepted the case that now United States did have a legitimate, legitimate reason to uh, react to this terrorist attack. So the targets, as far as the theory is concerned, the targets overreaction, we invaded uh, Afghanistan on October 2001. Uh, and that invasion was widely regarded throughout the world as legitimate and not as an overreaction. In other words, uh, the case of Afghanistan, at least in the world public opinion, in the court of world public opinion, was not regarded as overreaction. Also, you got to take into account that Taliban was not very popular in Afghanistan. It was a terrible regime, especially their uh, views toward freedom and toward women's rights was, was just outrageous. Their refusal also to hand over Osama bin Laden, the perpetrator, the leader of Al-Qaeda, the perpetrator of the attack, also made the case for invasion easy because we gave an ultimatum. We said, okay, hand over Osama bin Laden or we're going to come and get it. So to sum up, the U.S. invasion of Afghanistan was not regarded by much of the world as an overreaction. So therefore, up to that point, one could say that uh, Al-Qaeda really failed to achieve its strategy because the whole idea was the outrage produced by this uh, horrific act would lead to an overreaction on the part of the United States. But the United States reaction was not judged as overreaction. And as a result of that invasion, it led to the fall of Taliban from power in Afghanistan, and it sent Al-Qaeda running to the mountains. So up to that point, Al-Qaeda's st strategy simply had failed as far as political strategy is concerned. It had failed, as I mentioned, because for the most part, uh, the expected interpretation of the United States response as an overreaction did not materialize. But then came the next phase. And as soon as we had defeated the Taliban, uh, President George W. Bush set his eyes upon Iraq. And then you get the next phase, and that is Iraq's invasion. On March 2003, we invaded Iraq, which had absolutely nothing to do with 9-11. And in so doing so, in so doing, we fully fulfilled Al-Qaeda's expectation based on its strategy. 
that invasion was universally or almost universally seen as an overreaction, unjustified, and widely condemned as an colossal error. In the Muslim and Arab world, it would be seen as nothing less than by a large part of those masses as a 21st century crusade. And the word crusade actually was once used by uh, President Bush, which he then corrected later in favor of greater Middle East initiative. So the Iraq invasion um, is regarded as another instance of the Crusaders. So all the gains we had as far as dealing with the terrorists, defeating the terrorist strategy, went up in smoke with the invasion of Iraq. So Iraq should be viewed as George W. Bush's gift to Al-Qaeda. It gave Al-Qaeda a second lease on life. This time, though, it was not in Afghanistan, but in one of the major countries of the Middle East, Iraq. Moreover, the United States occupation of Iraq following the invasion had actually, for a period of time, for several years, had created a new imperial control that matches the formal direct control that we mentioned when we discussed various forms of imperial control with the military occupation. <clears throat> so what happened was, as a result, if we go back, it helped polarize much of the Muslim world, again, in tune with Al-Qaeda or the terrorist strategy. That invasion helped polarize the Muslim world. It also weakened the position of United States allies, such as Egypt, such as Saudi Arabia. The United States policies in the Middle East increasingly was making our client states uh, appear illegitimate and lackeys of the United States. And simultaneously, it was strengthening the Islamicist position. Uh, and in so doing, uh, it was creating uh, an environment that was uh, very, very uh, precarious for these uh, regimes that were closely tied to us. So we begin. Uh, what happened next is to see these pressure will translate into change in Arab regimes and policies. Well, mostly it occurred in terms of changing in uh, policies. Very few of these Arab regimes supported U.S. invasion of Iraq, if any. And uh, certainly Saudi Arabia was strongly opposed to it, especially once they realized that this is going to enable the Shiite majority in Iraq for the first time to become the rulers of a major Arab country. Eventually, uh, what happened was that the quagmire in Iraq uh, forced the United States to change its policy. Uh, so the policy, the Greater Middle East Initiative, part of President Bush's forward policy of democratizing that area, all were given up because they quickly reality hit home and they realized that they're not going to be able to achieve any of that. If anything, they are making the situation much worse. And so the policy really became one of trying to extricate ourselves from Iraq. Ultimately, though, Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden failed in Iraq. If you look at the public opinion, especially in the Arab Middle East, you will see that that failure is well reflected by the end of uh, 2011. And the 2011 was really the beginning of uh, well, the ending of the Iraq war, but also the beginning of the so-called Arab awakening. Um, this um, table shows that initially among Palestinian in 2003, at the time of the invasion of Iraq, 72% had confidence in Osama bin Laden. By 2011, 
that number had shrunk by 38% to 34%. Indonesia, 59% in 2011, 26% had confidence. Jordan, 56% down to 22, uh, 20 to 13%. Egypt, uh, we don't have the data for that date, but uh, it's pretty much down to about 22%. Uh, and Turkey, 15% uh, had approved it. Turkey is one of our allies, but it's certainly an independent state, but down to 3%. So Al-Qaeda's popularity has not increased anywhere by the end of 2011. It just had a surge uh, thanks to George W. Bush's policy in 2003. Also, I want to uh, mention that it is important not to lose perspective when we're dealing with terrorism. I want to show you one more slide, and that one shows that uh, if you look at the FBI's data bank uh, covering the terrorist attack from period of 25 years from 1980 to 2005, only the tiniest percentage of terrorist acts in the United States were perpetrated by Islamic extremists. In fact, Jewish extremists had 7%, Islamists had 6%, and the Latino had by far the largest share, 42%. So in other words, uh, we gotta keep perspective on how much United States has been affected by terror attack. However, there is no question that 9-11 really redefined our relationship to the Middle East terror, and in some ways, we ended up uh, redefining a, a good part of the Middle East.